Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. We break the news. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news breaks. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. A 24 hour news station. Oh, it's another beautiful Saturday here in Lagos. I'm so excited to have you join us again on the Saturday edition of Cool Digest. Of course, people are catching the Ebola fever. But before the Ebola fever was the Boko Haram fever. And of course, we're turning our attention again to the security state of the nation. But this time around, we're looking at it from a whole different perspective. Of course, you've heard about the NYC, the National Youth Service Corps. Of course, you see them wear these very beautiful uniform around the city and of course you call them the government children and all of that well prior to this time parents have been a little bit wary about sending their children to northern nigeria especially those states presently on the uh the emergency rule and of course being rocked day by day by the boko haram menace a few days ago the national youth service corps uh, announced the redeployment of core members from seven northern states and of course the affected states include Adamawa, Bauchi, Bono, Gombe, Gombe rather, Jigawa, Kano and Yobe State and of course that's why we're asking that question security threat the we see need the NYSC there's been a lot of talk as regards one of the establishments that many now call the oldest uh, it was established in 1973. If you count, that's over four decades now. And if you recall also the need and what preceded the creation of this scheme, it was after the Nigerian Civil War and it was in the bid to reconstruct, to reconcile and rebuild the country. And many are asking the question that if Nigerian youth cannot move away from their own home base to other parts of the country, then possibly the whole essence of the NYC is being defeated. I'm joined again this morning by a retired military colonel. Azizan Stan Lambo, thank you very much again for joining us. My pleasure. Man. How's been your day? Thank you. Well, let's start from here. The NYSC was created in a bid to reconstruct, <coughs> to yeah. reconcile, and to rebuild the country after the Nigerian civil war. It's over 40 years now. What's your assessment of the scheme thus far? Well, I would say the scheme has, uh, to a larger extent, served its purpose. Um, it was bequeathed to us by the military way back 1973 under the uh, General Gowan's administration. And um, the founding fathers, or those who actually uh, were able to conceive this idea, mm -hmm. had in mind the unity of this country. And that's why the scheme itself has served as a unifying factor. They had in mind the need to prepare future Nigeria's leadership cadre mm. for, 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 for greater challenges ahead as far as the unification of this country is concerned, which was very much at stake. Also, when you look at when the organization itself was, was formed, just coming on the heels of the, 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 of the civil, civil war. war. Yeah. So um, I think to a larger extent, it has served that purpose. When you see the level of, you know, uh, cultural integration that has been able to take place. Mm. Uh, even though we, people might want to say it is not impacting yet, but I can assure you it's only a matter of time. Well, it might require some review here and there, given the, 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 the pace of time it has gone through, mm. and of course all the eclectic mix which the Nigerian society itself has gone through. Mm. You know, one might say, but can we take a break and look and review these things? Fine. But the idea of whether scraping is or not, no, it shouldn't come in. Mm. We'll to get there. Yeah. The NYC scheme always starts with a three-week orientation campaign exercise yeah. that is paramilitary. At a point in time, many people were asking that possibly young Nigerians should be taught how to use arms and defend themselves, martial arts and all of that in the light of insecurity. But what would be your reaction to that? <coughs> The 
inject of a paramilitary training uh, segment into the entire scheme is a very welcome idea. I'm saying this falling back to my experience as a camp commandant. I had the privilege of being a camp commandant twice, once as a captain as a, and as a major. Um, I was privileged to really see the gains that component of paramilitary training was really going to serve to the scheme. Okay? Besides toughening these young lads, it goes a long way in drawing into them or inculcating into them that patriotism mm. that is required of you as a Nigerian, mm. more so future leaders which they are to be, haven't gone through tertiary level education. Mm. They are definitely future leaders. That's where we shall pull, draw the pool, I mean, draw out our leadership mm. uh, elements mm. in the future. It is from this crop. So, you know the military is noted very well for its leadership programs, mm. you know. So I, I, I don't see how it wouldn't have been better that, look, let's bring in some element of the military training into these guys, even at the paramilitary level. Do you but see a to need to about, take it further? <laughs> but to go beyond mm. that, say, training in arms and ammunition and so on, uh, we should leave that for serious... <laughs> serious <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not something we could just conclude immediately okay. and say, look, mm allow them to have some element of um, uh, uh, weaponry, mm. you know, uh, because a lot would have to be taken into consideration. Mm. A lot would have to be taken into consideration, more so in an environment where three quarter of the graduates might end up unemployed. Mm. You have to take a lot into cognizance so that you don't begin to help the devil in training its tools. But you made mention of um, patriotism earlier. Yes. Uh, how has the scheme really impacted that virtue called patriotism in yeah. the Nigerian youth? Apart from the three weeks um, orientation campaign and then you leave your state of origin to another part of the country, yeah. where does that patriotism come from in the whole scheme called NYSE? The multicultural awareness which it brings to bear on you as an individual. With all the indoctrination you have gone through in the course of your three or one month uh, campaign, mm. and of course, the way the scheme itself too is run, which I must admit requires some adjustments here and there. Mm. But all the same, if as a committed copper, you are able to go through the entire one month, uh, one year training, okay? One year training. I mean, the three, uh, one month uh, 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 campaign, okay. and then the bulk of the rest uh, live as a copper. I can assure you that look, at the end of the day, your sense of loyalty to this country must have been enhanced. Your feeling of patriotism. You see yourself defending your country at every point. You see yourself standing up for your country the green white green flag begins to mean so much to you and so on mm. it's just the feeling a young officer derives at the end of his training from the defense academy mm. a young soldier has at the end of his training from depot he sees himself as look this country must be defended this country nobody can try us you know when you talk with him you know yes this is a soldier mm. he is really ready to defend his country those of us who are privileged to have been in camp with these boys, these are the sort of ideas we try to inject into them. For instance, those who had the privilege of going through me, when we are on the parade ground with coppers and it starts raining, my dear, we don't leave the rain. I remember I did that it deliberately. On the sun and in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> I, did it deli I, I often do it deliberately. Okay. The rain could last for one hour. Mm. We remain there, continue our drill. The rain will finish on us, the sun will start off, dry us up before we close. But do you agree that some would say that that sense of seriousness that comes with the scheme has been perforated over time and it doesn't come with the quality that it used to have? That's why we have all agreed that there is a need for some review. There is a need to inject seriousness mm. and the program itself, the entire package, 
should be taken a good look at. In your time as a camp commandant, how yes, would please. you describe the uh, discipline, commitment, and patriotism of the Nigerian youth? It was already sliding. Mm. And that is where now the personality and individuality of whoever is a camp commandant comes into bear. You must be able to hold your own and to ensure, within the first three days, the couples should know, look, this is this man's way of handling affairs. Mm. You either go along with him or you be in problems. Mm. And once you see that seriousness in you, you yourself, you are not compromising. Because leadership, like I keep saying, leadership comes with a price. If I have to keep coppers under the rain on drill, I must be on that drill square with them. Okay. The rain is beating me and it's beating you. Mm. But when I say remain there and I go and sit in my car, mm. that's no leadership. Mm. Or I now drive home, that's no leadership. Just like I said, leadership comes with a price. It was already sliding as at then, as at now, I know it has, it has gone right down low. Mm. We all now need to sit up, look at the scheme again, look at the concepts behind the scheme, mm. and see where and where we can get things fixed up. You know, given the limited of time for that paramilitary training, I, I'm not sure it's even up to a month. I think it's like three weeks. Yes, three uh, weeks. One would have thought what had happened before NYSE that discipline and patriotism should have become a part of the education system, especially the tertiary you know, institutions where they have been for the past four or five yeah. years because they come out already made and one would wonder how much impact that three weeks of paramilitary and just a year of this scheme can impact on their lives. Nifemi, I tell you, as short as it is, we could really impact a lot into them. One, you should understand that the bulk of the persons coming out of tertiary institutions today are still kids, frankly. They are still kids. Most of them are between the ages of 19 and 25. <laughs> at the pace my son is going, I know he would, he, he, even if he's to read medicine, he might be graduating at 22 or 23. Mm. So this is a trend we have now. These are still kids. To an extent, they still have this impressionable mind. It all depends now on the sort of leadership you are able to avail there during that short period. The level of mentorship you bring to bear on the camp. Do they look up to you? Do they see you and see a symbol of somebody who is defending this country? Do they see in you a leadership which they yearn for? Mm. It's your leadership. It's your leadership now that matters. And if all the individuals that work in the camp, both the NYC permanent staff mm. and those of us, the military, who come in you know, on a short basis to avail certain uh, training to the chaps. On it. If we all take a very serious uh, perspective to the entire training session, mm. I can assure you these boys, these kids will just follow through. Sorry, let's climb down the ladder a little bit lower yeah. from the NYC, we we'll come down to the tertiary institution. Yes, please. We'll now come down a little bit more to the family, which is the basic institution. Yeah. Are you aware that we now have 10 year old bombers in Nigeria? minors, we have female suicide bombers. Mm -hmm. How do you juxtapose all of that together with the effectiveness of the NYC trading? Was it just three weeks? Mm -hmm. Don't you think lots need to be done below oh, rather than putting so much trust at the NYC? Of course, the family as, a, as an agent of socialization plays a very vital role in the life of every individual. Mm -hmm. The sort of family you come out from goes a long way in molding your conscience, in, in giving you a conscience that guides you nearly all through in life. There are certain things I dare not do today. I just feel my mom is watching at me. And you've always known her attitude towards such things. And you dare not just do it. It has become part of you and accepted. And even when you mistakenly do it, you tell yourself why. That consciousness in you, which has been built up right from the family time, serves as a guide mm. and pulls you through society. And that's why, why growing up 
in most cases, especially uh, uh, up north where we have these, you know, uh, 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 very close ties, you know, within the communities and so on. Mm. Where in most cases, it's not only your parents that are overseeing you, the next Hajia next door, the next auntie next door, and so on. So, with all these elders placing all attention on you as a child growing up, you find it very difficult as a den to misbehave. Yeah. Uh, that's why at times when I see some of the things happening today, I ask myself, is this not the same north we all grew up from? Yeah. What is happening? Is it that the, f the entire family fabric has fallen apart? Or what is going on? From the recent news we got, um, just a few days ago, the NYC announced that the redeployment of core members from, you know, from seven northern states, and these states include Adamawa, Bauchi, Bronu, Gombe, Jigawa, Kano, and Yobe states. I mean, if <coughs> coppers... Excuse me. You're welcome, sir. If coppers cannot be redeployed to northern Nigeria, I mean, what is left of the NYC scheme? <laughs> and if I may look, we are discussing security now. Uh, we cannot uh, begin to scrap or question the continuous existence of any formidable organization or platform like the NYSC just because certain aspects of its um, uh, objectives cannot be met if it was founded on about eight objectives and just one alone is having a challenge. It's not enough for us to want to downplay such a platform, more so a vital platform as this. Mm. Boko Haram is not going to be there forever. The challenges we're experiencing in those areas are not going to be there forever. And this is not the first time that we are trying to say, look, restrict the posting to these areas. We have done it in other areas. If tomorrow, we do not pray for that, but if tomorrow anything happens in the South side by virtue of uh, militants rising up again and so on, it will only be natural and proper that government protects the coppers from there. That does not mean that uh, these are mere temporary challenges. Once we surpass them, we we'll go ahead. Oh, you sound very optimistic. These very, are temporary very. challenges, of course, but some will tell you they have, last for, they have lasted for close to a decade. But beyond all of that, let's look at the idea of uniting young Nigerians. I remember that when I was a COPA, I was nominated to join a national youth um, conference thereabout where they bring COPAs from all across the 36 states of Nigeria. And that conference was held in Nasarawa. We were all excited to go there. Okay. But on the second thought too, you know, we were conscious of the insecurity that pervades northern Nigeria. Uh, what do you see left of a scheme where we now have core members serving in their own states and in their own region in Nigeria? You compare that with the very essence of reconstructing Re reconciling and rebuilding the country. I still do not think it is proper for us to have coppers serving in their own home states. Mm. It runs or it negates the, 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 uh, one of the very principles for which it was set up. Mm. One of the essence for which it was set up was for Nigerians to go around and know this country better. And if there's anybody that should know the country better, it should be those that belong, in fact, to the leadership cadre. And if we can capture these ones as young as they are, and these are the future leaders, we expose them to such. I am not of the opinion that they should serve in their own home states, no. Mm -hmm. We should try to avoid that as much as possible. Personally, I've, right from the word go, I've always said that I frown against coppers who insist in serving in their own home states. Unfortunately, I keep telling them, what it's... do you stand to gain? Mm. You don't want to know your country? Mm. You were born there? You had a primary education there? had secondary education, maybe you went to that same University of Ife, and then now you want to come and serve again in that same Oshun state. When will you know Nigeria? If I were you, I would be struggling to be in Meduguri, or in Sokoto, or in Rivers, or in Akwaibo. You just want to remain one spot, maybe you end up taking an appointment in University of Ife, become a professor in University of Ife, and you don't even know Nigeria. But you'll be quoting, telling us all sorts of things about... Uh, Britain and U.S., because that's where you go on holidays. Definitely you don't go on holidays in Medjugorje. Mm. 
at the end, you call yourself a Nigerian? But what's responsible for that? The psycho force and the sort of uh, leadership we've had all, uh, all along. That is just it. Research has also shown that the structures are no longer there as it used to. Now it is easier for a core member now to influence a state of posting. Our structures at the national level have all gone weak. We must call it speedy speed. They have all gone weak, frankly. Such that um, certain things that should not be happening are busy happening. Uh, I have disappointed a few families of late who tried to get me into seeing how I can assist in changing posting locations of their children and so on. I guess they never knew they were talking to the wrong person. You are talking to an individual who every day feels so bad that this scheme is not working the way it should work. But you are aware that your disapprover of that is just like a drop out of a mighty ocean. Yes, that is my own little way of contributing. I try to sit such parents down and educate them and tell them, look, this is a young man who tomorrow you will not be there for him. Allow him now that you can see him and watch him to try his hands in deep waters. Mm. If he's sinking, you still have the privilege of pulling him out. Well, aren't the fears, the fears of these parents, are they not justified given the security situation of Nigeria? Government is already addressing the security aspect of it. That is for those who are posted to areas where we have insurgency. Hmm. Outside such That's waters. Right. Tyrone, let's move um, briefly away from all of that to look at the welfare package that exists yeah. for this scheme. Yeah. You know, recently the federal government increased the allowance from about eight or nine thousand to nineteen thousand eight hundred thereabout. Mm. You know, and um, it came with a lot of um, applause and you know a lot of people commending and all of that. But do you think that is enough to pay a Nigerian? graduate and of course you know at a time where people are asking questions like what do I gain to benefit <coughs> from my country what do I gain to benefit from the federal government if you go to this camp I, I said to and I noticed that the quality of the food even served at the campground is nothing compared to what an average Nigerian should have access to given the you know wealth of natural resources that are bound here Nifemi, a lot of things have gone wrong with us in this country. And underneath all this is corruption. Mm. The feeding in the camp can be improved. Definitely, it could be improved. But where can you lay the blame? Is it with those running the feeding process in the camp that are probably pilfering? on resources that are meant for the kids? Mm. Could it be at the point of release that already the money meant for feeding has been highly depleted? You never could know where to place it, but the point is that corruption could be at work. Mm. As to the pittance they have been paid, I don't think that 19,000 or so is good enough. I really don't think so. And more so, I was expecting that by now, the federal government could have come out with a policy which is welfare in, in, in nature. Mm. That look for all public transports, not private transport, all public transports, coppers are allowed to ride free. Mm. So like we have the BRT buses, they could ride free. Like we have all these federal government mass transport, all those owned by the federal government, mm. they could ride free mm. and things like that. So the gentleman or lady knows Okay, transport-wise, that has been taken care of. Mm. So this money is meant to feed me. Then once in a while, the states where they are serving, I expect the governments to show a lot of concern welfare-wise. Mm. Nothing stops the state governor from saying, okay, the federal is paying you 19, I'm going to add 10,000 to that. It makes it 29. Mm. Uh, I don't want to talk of local governments because the governors have all fizzled up local governments. Yeah. Local government chairman are more or, more or less, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, they have no resources at their disposal. So let's stop at the level of the governors. 
But if the three tier of government were to be running appropriately, by the time the governor chips in something, the local government chairman chips in something, that gentleman will be a yeah. bit okay. Isn't that Mind you, mm. the scheme itself is a sacrifice. Mm. It's a sacrifice. So we should not be seeing it as a full-time job. Now shouldn't, shouldn't the government at all, at, at, at the three tiers that you made mention, also yes. see it as being sacrificial enough? For instance, we're talking about an establishment that has been on for the past four decades. And in some states, there are still no permanent orientation camps. State governments have been coming you know, one after the other, uncompleted project as regards building permanent. I mean, how do you feel as a Nigerian graduate and then you are posted to a particular state and then they give you one grammar school, mosquito infested, snake. There are occurrences of snake bites in some orientation camps that exist in Nigeria. This is a country where we have a lot of billions of naira flying around and state governments cannot build permanent orientation camps. So how do you expect the young, you know, copper to be committed and patriotic? That is an indication to you of the type of leadership your country has. I have always said it, time without number, that we have never had our first 11 playing in the political space. This is a country that is well endowed with individuals who can avail us good leadership, but they do not have the opportunity to go through the entire process and emerge as leaders. Yeah. Political parties don't even have an internal democracy, so how can the right person emerge? So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, mediocres emerge, end up as governors yeah. or whatever, so tell me, if such a governor is not mediocre, tell me how he does not see the relevance of the NYC scheme to know that, look, I think I need to contribute my own quarter by making sure we have a camp in this state for these young uh, future leaders. Mm. A governor needs to be reminded of that. He needs to be reminded of that. You know, possibly they don't see that as their primary constituency. I said it is indicative <laughs> of the quality of mm. leadership mm. which you and I are putting in place. Most of these guys are not fit to be governors. Do I need to tell you that? Please, let's not go into all that. Well, we don't have a choice. We have to go into all of that because we'll also be looking at how we can revisit this scheme if it's not scrapped in the face of insecurity. Of course, federal government is showing a lot of commitment in that area that this scheme would not be scrapped. But also yeah. we have to revisit how united the three tiers of government must be to show commitment in this area. You know, a governor, for instance, is a political figure and probably might be thinking that how would this camp be a political campaign tool for me for my next election? But before we get there, I remember that I was the leader of a welfare syndicate at that National Youth Conference that we spoke about earlier. And we were even talking about the quality of the uniforms that are made available to core members. You'll be surprised that Nigeria, as the federal government has not been able to get people's accurate sizes to provide you know, baccarat uniforms that were sized there. Not even to talk about the quality of boots, of socks. Many wear out within the first week or two weeks, and then you find people spending that meager amount to purchase quality uniforms and footwear for themselves as core members. How do you react to that? It all still boils down to leadership, but I would want to, you know, analyze a bit. My late dad, who died an illiterate, would always tell me in a regretful manner that this country is finished, that Nigeria has turned into something else. It is becoming a country where no law works, where you can jump up and do anything you want and get away with it. This is somebody who is so much or who so much believes in the British, because he had worked with the British a great deal. Yeah. And he keeps telling you, and he will, when he talks, he cites his examples to you. He'll tell you, look at the street in front of our house. That street was starred in 1950. He will tell you the year and everything. Yeah. And then he will point another street 
tired by your politician two years back, mm. and you will see the difference. The two years back street is completely... Hmm. And look at the one that was started 1950-something. Hmm. What am I trying to bring, bring out here? It is not only the NYSE scheme that you have all these poor uniforms, poor boots, and so on. I do not see why, by now, we have not encouraged companies, leather companies in Kano, to be producing boots for all military and paramilitary uh, agencies in this country. By now, the federal government should have banned the importation of boots and uniforms so that the textile industry can grow, the boots, leather boots manufacturing, uh, uh, producing can, uh, companies in Kano can be productive, can have uh, outlets for their products and so on. But the sort of leadership we have put in place are the type who would rather prefer to import boots mm. where they can make 10% in dollars and store it there rather than encouraging one local industry to grow. And we all just sit and watch. There is no presidential directive to stop all this mess. Nobody cares. Are there no ministers of trade and investment? Uh, why is nobody speaking out? Mm. Then when are we going to have our home industries growing? Where are we going to have the employment to give all these youths coming out? This country, for heaven's sake, by now, if I have my way, there will be a 10-year ban on importation of everything. We shall feed, close all our borders, feed ourselves, produce all what we need. After 10 years, 15 years, we shall come out better for it. Do you believe we can survive that 10 years? China survived it. What are we talking about? It's a matter of, oh my God. <laughs> it's all right. I've been speaking with retired Colonel Azan Stan Lambo, and of course, he's also been a camp commander twice during his career as a military officer. As we begin to look at security threat, who still need the NYSC? Of course, the NYSC just told us earlier that there is an ongoing redeployment of core members from seven northern states, of course, Adamawa, Bauchi, Bronugumbe, Jigawa, Kano, and Yobi states. When we come back in the next half, the retired Kano will still be with me. We'll be looking at the way forward and how Nigerian youth can be integrated and involved in the ongoing national development of our their country, Nigeria. Stay with us and don't go away. You can now watch Core TV News Live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV. Live a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station.